No, nah, it's cool. Um, it's Watch Me Work. I'm SLP. It's uh, whatever day it is, whatever date it is. No, it's uh, I think it's Tuesday, and I think it's the 28th of July. Correct. I've been doing this show for 11 years in all kinds of various places. And um, we thank the Public Theater for supporting us and helping us get this together. And we thank Hal Round for coming on board to help us live stream initially in the lobby of the Public Theater and then um, coming on to help us do this like this. But we haven't changed. We're like, I'd say we're like Shakespeare in the park, but we're not Shakespeare, we're not in the park, but we are free. And um, we're gonna work for 20 minutes together. And then I'm going to take questions from y'all about your work and your creative process. That's why it's called Watch Me Work, because it's about you. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, and if you have a question, Audrey will tell us how to, what button to press. <laughs> Thanks, SLP. Um, so if you're inside of the Zoom and you have a question you want to ask, you can click on the participant tab. It's likely at the bottom of your screen if you're on a laptop or the top if you're on an iPad or a tablet. And inside of the participant tab, there's a little raise your hand button. Click on that, a little blue hand will pop up and we'll call on you if we've got time. Um, and if you're watching on HowlRound.TV, or actually anywhere where we're live streaming, uh, you can tweet at us at, at watchmeworkslp with the hashtag HowlRound, H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D. Uh, or you can tweet at the Public Theater at Public Theater NY uh, or write to the Public Theater's Instagram. And that's it. Okay, that's everything. Okay, so here we go for 20 minutes.
All right, all right. It's time for the chatty part. We don't have any questions quite yet. You know what I'm going to do? Oh, we got a question from Crystal. But I'll still hey, practice hey. in the meantime. Yeah, how's, how's, it, how's it going, Crystal? Hi, I'm struggling. I'm, I'm really struggling. Um, oh. Yeah, I've been, um, I've, so I've been working on this for hours. I spent the whole day trying to work on this. And um, so what I decided to do was try to work on a new outline, not oh. necessarily start completely over. Um, but I guess what I recognize the, the flaw in this draft is not is that it's not active enough. Um, and so I'm trying to figure out how can I make it more active while addressing the questions um, at the same time, because I while there are parts where people are stand, like standing and talking to the audience um there are also scenes so i but i i'm struggling with finding ways to make it active and how how do i find that i feel like you've answered this question many times before i don't know why that's I, okay. okay that's okay we can still talk about it because i mean it, it sometimes it's you know i know you're listening and i know you you take in everything that everybody says here and at the same time Sometimes it only is going to make an impact on you when you're right in it, you know? So yeah. no, we can we can talk about similar things over and over. Um, how to make it active. So you've got a character. Let's just take one character at a time. Um, your main character. She wants mm -hmm. something. What does she want? Oh, she, um, she wants to protect children from a group of people. Okay, okay. So from scene to scene, and, and so does she achieve that at the end of the play? Um, she does. Okay, okay. So um, from scene to in any given scene, what is she doing to achieve that? Um, well, the, the objective shifts because in the beginning, I don't think I have it clear enough in my mind yet what to do with her just yet. She she kind of has, to, she discovers that this is her calling even though it impedes on other people. Okay, okay. Um, so in the beginning, she is just sort of minding her own business and discovers that this is sort of her reason to be. Right. Okay. Okay, but from after that moment, then what does she actively do? What is she actively doing to achieve her goal? Um, she um, she speaks to people, like she tries to rally people. Okay. And for, um, what is it called? Like a campaign. Okay. Uh, she tries to like, in her own way, convert one of her, um, the, the cousin um to con to try to convert him um i think that's all i have <laughs> um i don't i don't think i have another answer okay well i'm just saying you said it's because you're saying it's not active enough so i'm just trying to find the things that she is doing you know yeah um, do you think, would it be helpful if she had more things to do? It'd be at least worth a try. Okay. Does she do anything um, dishonest? In her, in her eyes, no. Does she do anything? Okay. So, I mean, does she do anything that's like pits one group of people against another group of people or one person against another one? Yes. Okay, is that- She came together with her husband to do that. Okay, okay, so is that uh, separate from these other two things you mentioned? That can be. <laughs> can be, right? Yeah. Okay, she could, she could make that a more, she could make the conversion, what do you say, a conversion of somebody, a conversion of a-, a, a The cousin. A, okay, conversion right. of a cousin. Okay, so 
and you say her cousin, I'm remembering from earlier times, her cousin is, you know, kind of looking up to her and in the end sort of doesn't yeah. look up to her so much. Right. Younger. Okay. So how old is her cousin uh, much younger than she is? No, they grew up together. So okay. she, he's, he's like 19, 20, and then they, they end up growing about the same age. Right, right, right. Does her, does her cousin have to quit a job to work for her? What I'm saying is she, you need to find things that this your main character is doing. You know, it sounds like it from what you say, right? Mm -hmm. She's not active enough. So we need to find things for her to do. So for example, if her cousin were working a, a, a day job and she's like, come work for me, you know, that's, uh, you know, and she could talk her into do, I mean, we need to see things happening. It sounds like, I, it's hard to yeah. tell because I'm not, you know, I, I'm not looking at your pages. Right. So we need to see her kind of doing things. You can also just make a list of things that your main character could do or people in the play could do to achieve their goals. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I mean, it's simple, so stupid. And it, it has to be, remember, Crystal, we always say it has to be a list of stupid things. Like, yeah. she steals a car. <laughs> she robs a bank right she buys a pair of shoes that don't fit but they look good you know what uh -huh. i'm saying you know yeah. buys a dress and she buys a, 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 a an outfit that she cannot afford bill comes yeah. due and she doesn't pay it you know what i mean i mean yeah. things to, just just activities you could just make lists and lists of fun things to watch your characters do in pursuit of their goals Okay. And then choose some things. I think it's great that you're making a new outline or a beat sheet, you know? You're not starting yeah. from scratch. You're just you're just reconsidering, you're just pulling way back you can see your story more clearly. A lot of the dialogue will still be useful. A lot of the basic structure of the scenes will still be useful. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So so make yourself some lists of fun activities, actions, uh, things that they can do, that your characters can do. Okay, okay? I'll do, that. yeah. It's like, let's say your, 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 your character wanted to be, you know, whatever, president of the United States, right? That was her goal. What would she have to do to, do, to achieve that? See what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, so you'd, ha you'd think you'd be able to see scenes of, of what she would be doing. Yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. 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 Check back in tomorrow. We'll be here. <laughs> we'll be here. Okay. I will. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Crystal. Thanks. Um, all right. Up next, we've got Nick. Go for it, Nick. Hi, SLP. Hey, how's it going, man? Uh, not too bad, all things considered. Um, so first, I just wanted to thank you for your responses last week. Um, like the last one that you gave me had me reflect and consider what I was doing with my writing a lot. Oh. And I went back to, I took that play back to an outline because I'm like, I, I'm like, I don't know what I was writing this play for. And I have to figure that out from like some building block blocks. Uh -huh. And that was really helpful. Yeah. Uh, so the weakness that I have today to ask help on is organizing is a really big problem when I'm writing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, for this outline, for instance, you know, I've got some note cards and I've got like four different documents with little notes and like threads all in those, but I have a hard time just getting everything together at one cohesive place that I can open and say, oh, okay, this is where I have everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if you have any tips about, like, if there's anything that works for you for mm -hmm. keeping things in the I'm, I'm, I'm looking at Laura. She's smiling. She showed us that recipe box. You know, I love index cards. That's my, yeah, see, Laura, I love index cards. I love them. Um, and I, I have lots of notebooks and everything, which at a certain point can be really overwhelming. So it sounds, yeah, I've been, I've been where you've been, Nick. I've been where you are right now. I get my index cards and I write the scenes in abbreviated fashion, a beat sheet on index cards. 
And I love it because then you can write a new scene and just kind of stick it in the in the order can change, right? Then I get myself, I don't have one right. Oh, where's I don't have one at my fingertips. A clip, you know, a binder clip. One of those, oh. you know, one of those clips. I where is it? Ah oh, shit. Oh hold, hold on, hold on a minute. Excuse me. Because I love them so much. I have so many of them. You know? Yeah. I like silver, right? Yeah, yeah, right? And then you so you, and they can hold like a lot of pay a lot of things, right? They can hold a lot of cards. And if you go, if you have too many, you get two clips, you know what I'm saying? But um, so I love that because then you can like carry it around in your bag or your whatever you call those things, your slash thing, you know, those things you have when you go on your socially distanced outings. Uh, where you go protest, right? You can carry it with you and you can like be marching and thinking about it and it's on your back or, you know, it's on your person. That's a good, I love those cards. So that's, that's really fun. That's really good. I love the paper clip idea. I hadn't thought of that. That's awesome. I mean, rubber bands also work, but you know. I get nervous cool. with rubber bands. There you go. Look and look at, look at Julia. She's got, she's got a rubber band on her. She don't get nervous, but and I like like the teeth of it. You like that? Yeah. So. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Sure. Thanks, Nick. I should get a cut from Staples. Yeah, really. <laughs> um, we're gonna go to Emma next. Uh, are you there, Emma? Hi, SLP. Hey, Emma. Hi. How are you? This is such an honor to be talking to you. Oh, hey. Thanks for <laughs> visiting. Yeah, thank you. Um, I started coming in here in March um, and it's just been wonderful. I have more of a background in academic writing. Um, I did a BA and then finished my master's th this year in May. So Congratulations. thank you. Um, and I've written some poetry kind of, yeah. <laughs> I wrote some poetry um, just kind of for myself um, while I was finishing my degree, um, but always really wanted to try creative writing. Uh -huh. So I'm doing that now and I, I love it. I am working on a play right now Yay. and um, it's, it's really fun. I've started outlining and I'm about halfway through my outline. Um, and I realized this is probably like a playwriting 101 question, but I don't know like what constitutes a scene. And I have like all these scenes on my note cards, but I don't really know if they are scenes or not. Huh. Well, okay. That's a great question, Emma. And um, my disclaimer, I should say this at the beginning of all these, I didn't go to school for writing. So I'm just making shit up. Okay, I just well. So um, I think it, it's a it's a unit of action. You know, like um, trying to think, it's a unit of action. So uh, just that's and I always go back to you know the classics. You know, the standard, boring sometimes classics because it's something that we we might have as a group of folks in this part of the world might have been exposed to more often than not. So like Hamlet, you know, mm -hmm. they, they're, the dudes are hanging out on the castle walls and they, they're talking about, Oh shit, the ghost, man, I'm scared of the ghost. I'm scared of the ghost. You too, you too. Yeah. What are we going to do about it? I don't know. There it goes. Oh shit. We better call Hamlet. <laughs> See, <laughs> you know, I, mean? okay. I, I, I don't know. I haven't read the play in years, but you know, okay. <laughs> It's a unit of action. Um, if you want, the best way to get the definition, because it varies from writer to writer, is to take a look at some plays that you like, or even plays that you love, you know, not just to see like, how does this writer handle a unit of action? Okay. You know, sometimes a unit of action could be a song. You know, I've written plays where the unit of action is just a song. Character comes on stage and goes, sings you know mm -hmm. do you uh, have i so i just read um raising the sun i feel like i'm kind of like starting my like education all over again um but from like a playwriting perspective uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, and i ordered um uh samuel beckwith's like waiting for godot classic okay. 
Okay. So, there you do go. you have any other yeah. suggestions? Yeah. I mean, so these are wide ranging, you know, into yeah. Dr. John Gay's for colored girls, you know, because her scene is like, you know, <laughs> a uh, lady in green saying somebody just walked off with all my stuff and lady in green goes on and on and on and then boom she's done and that's a scene you know so you can read everything from Intozaki Shange's for color girls you can read the glass menagerie you know what I mean I mean it, it, mm. it, it, it it's there's so much good stuff out there yeah there's you know that's great really, place yeah that's really helpful um I think right now like my scenes are kind of like moods which okay. is how I've been thinking about it um but I think like that'll be a useful thing to do because I know like a lot of times a scene has multiple moods and right now in my head like I'm just going from like mood to mood to mood of like the overall play but what I but I suggest before you put down your note cards and start reading plays mm -hmm. because you want to get it right <laughs> Yeah, finish your outline. Yeah. Finish your outline and dare yeah. to write what you're feeling, right? Yeah. Get to the end, okay? And mm -hmm. then go and read, you know, even if you don't feel like reading Shakespeare, there's a reason why we still perform Shakespeare and watch Shakespeare and talk about Shakespeare, because he's good. I know, I know, we'll let you in on something that's not a secret. He's a DWM, a dead white male. All right, okay, we got that over with. But honestly, for my money, he's really good. Okay. And I would go and see him in the park or his plays in the park, even if they weren't free, you know, they're really good and they're easily accessible. You can probably get, um, access them online. Mm -hmm. Just look at some of those scenes, just pick at random a scene. Oh, okay. look at that scene. Google great scenes from Shakespeare. You know, they might have them available for actors. Actors might enjoy those kinds and read, you know, just read them, just read them. Okay, you don't have to read the whole play if you're not into it. Read yeah. a okay? And then some of these other plays that I mentioned. Um, but finish your outline first. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. That's really helpful. Thank you so much. Okay, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks I'm so realizing much. the door is open and my family's oh. got hi. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm in my mom's house. This is, uh, this is, yeah, okay. <laughs> Larry, I'm you're talking okay. really loud. My family's going, what are you saying? Oh. <laughs> Okay. All hey, right, Larry. Larry. Hi, how are you? Hi, how you doing, man? I'm good. I'm like, uh, 20 minutes wasn't enough. I was like, I'm, I'm on a roll. I'm on a roll. Um, so it was a good, good, uh, good spurt. Um, so um, I am trying to actually write um, a character. And I'm, I'm interested in kind of creating um, a code mm. for that character. And like, uh, not, I, I think, I guess, a, a, a version that I associate with the way that you make up your own spelling and your, uh, you put a character name and then there's no dialogue and, and um, the placement on the page um, and like using, uh, you know, other nonverbal cues to give the actor mm -hmm. something nonverbal to work with, or I guess a code, something that um, uh, I don't know what it is yet, as you can see, I'm sort of like, I'm just, it's in my head. So I guess I was curious to know, like, how, like, when do you, how did you create your code and what made you? Mm -hmm. um, what inspired you to make your own code and how, how does that how does that come out of you how mm -hmm. does how do you particularly since you write for tv and also plays and things like that do you um do do, do the things you write for film and tv also have mm -hmm. um, you know yeah, spells they appear on the page uh, uh, in unusual ways and things yeah, like yeah, that yeah 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 that's a great question larry no <laughs> well, I save all that good, delicious stuff for theater. Um, in film, you know, in film, because the image is so large, or or even t TV, where you know, you, even if you're just watching it on your laptop, it, if the image feels very big and you know up close, kind of thing, you know, like we're doing that a lot. 
um, in, in, in film or in a teleplay. So I don't feel the need to write in the way that I write for theater, you know? Um, yeah. And I write for theater because I just didn't know how else to do it. Like I was saying, I, I didn't go to school for it. So I grew up in the wild or on the Lower East Side. I mean, not I didn't grow up there, but I grew up there as a writer. So, you know, we were trying shit and trying to put on the page what I was feeling. I mean, you know, the I came out of the tradition of, you know, uh, uh, what is it called? Gee, I can't remember. It's called the New York Poets Cafe, you know, and people like Intazaki, uh, Srange, and Lori Carlos, and you know, the, the people who were making, you know, like it, way back in the day, you know, Sam Shepard and Patti Smith were doing that kind of thing. So there was a whole generation of people who were poets and and theater writers. So I was just trying to figure out how to put on the page what I was feeling. And a long stage direction doesn't cut it for me all the time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, although like Tennessee Williams can write a whole page of stage direction or Eugene O'Neill, a whole page of stage direction. Um, that wasn't cutting it for me. Also, I was looking at Shakespeare again. He don't got a lot of stage directions. Hmm, interesting, right? But he conveys a lot of power in the language. So, um, uh, sort of a, a, you know at the crossroads of all that I just started making up shit and a lot of people didn't like it but I wasn't trying to be inventive I guess I just want to explain that I wasn't like trying to be interesting I was just getting it down the, the so it could be understood by strangers who I wouldn't meet because that was that's my goal you know get strangers to do a play in a town I've never been to um yeah. You know, so I would just say, let it come out of a feeling that you're feeling, um, That's great. That's uh, but it, you know, let it come out, let it be organic to what you're experiencing and you'll be on the right track. And, and did you find that the, you know, when, when you, I guess, went beyond, I guess, traditional play structure, grammar or whatever, um, did that come out of a feeling in you or like, is it character related or is it you related? Um, What's the difference, really? What's the difference, Larry, between me and a character? I guess in that, I go back to like one of the early questions I answered you, because if it's me, then all my characters sound like me. Oh, well, see, that's I, the difference between us. If it's me, I don't know what's going to come out. <laughs> because I because I asked that question. See, you know who you are. I'm, I'm not really sure who I am. I... We're still asking that question. I've not decided on what, you know, Jim's laughing. Jim knows what I'm talking about. I mean, you look in the mirror, Larry, really, look in the mirror, right? Like, you know, later today, right. look in the mirror, take off your glasses and look in the mirror and say, who are you really? And start, and then you're going to say, oh shit, right? There's yeah. the you that you decide upon being in front of people. Right. And that you changes depending on who you're in front of. And then there's the you who is like, when you're not around people and you're somebody when nobody's looking, who is that? We don't know. I don't know. All right, you're right. Well, you know, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, no, that's a great answer. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks. Wow. Thanks, Becky. Thanks, Larry. Um, all right, we're going to go to Bob. Hey, Bob. Hello. How you, How doing? you doing, Bob? Hey. I'm hanging in. How are you? Oh, uh, all right. I have a question. I, I'm also a musician. Oh, and cool. uh, and so I, it's something I've never really asked about, but I figured you'd be a wonderful person to ask about song lyrics, writing songs. And, you know, for me, it's I kind of know what I'm going for in a story, character, give or take certain act structures, satisfying ending. And, and, and with a song, I never really know how to what I'm looking for, there's certainly moments and lyrics and things that come together, but none of them have ever really coalesced in a way that it just has that click that mm -hmm. I think great literature, great songs, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I'm just wondering for you as someone who, you know, mm -hmm. what your experience is and not even how it differs from more traditional narrative writing, but just your process, how you go looking, how you coalesce, how you build, um, 
your songwriting. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. That's something I never get to talk about enough and rarely ever talk about because no one ever asks. That's a great question. What instrument? Do you play an instrument? I yes. do. I play guitar and piano. You and you play know. guitar, piano. Okay. Yeah. That. What What I do is I uh, work from groove. It's the same way that I write a play or a novel or whatever, or screenplay or whatever. It's just, uh, it's more obvious with the with the, an instrument. I pick up the instrument and blah, 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 like basically that's the version of, I don't know who I am. I don't know who I am. And I play around until I find a groove that I like. And the groove, it's like a riverbed. And I sort of just like run around back and forth in that groove and see what comes. Very weird. It's 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 much uh, you know I I I'm or my or I might have um, a title that I really like. Ooh, you know I'm gonna and so but I've still find futz around and try to find a groove, meaning a chord progression or a lick you know that I like that I like doing. Diddly do do ding, diddly do do ding, diddly do do ding, diddly do do ding. You put a beat to um um um. Uh, right so you can play those against each other then you just play that back and forth and then some words might start coming i don't know what they are <laughs> right remember uh you know the story of paul mccartney writing yesterday he he it started he was just saying scrambled eggs do you have a son a, a son a, a child bob or have you grown no. it's interesting and i don't know if all kids are like this my son baby uh when he was a baby or you know one years or whatever when they start to talk, start talking he'd be like this like that. i was fascinated i'm like that's exactly how i write man you just go blah, 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 blah. and draft after draft you make it more coherent actually so when you got your groove bob you know on your guitar whether you're playing the piano right you got your lick that you like all right, you got a, a rhythm to it that you're enjoying. Just start saying shit. Even if it's I also use my phone. I record. I use the the voice memo thing. Yep, me too. On my phone, yeah. Because if I'm walking around and I think of a lick or a two, uh, like a little riff thing that I like, I record it and I come home and I try to play it. You know. So it's much more, um, you know, like I wrote Bronze Star for Father Comes Home from the Wars. I started out with a E minor chord, upstroke. I was like, I know that chord's in there. I don't know anything else. And I just kept playing that fucking chord. It's an easy chord to play, but you know, just that. Like, I don't know what this song is, but it's an E minor upstroke on the guitar. And I just kept listening until the song started appearing do you do you rewrite and work and work i mean i mean even the lyrics the one you do sure. still kind of try and bring them together and sure 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 lots of rewriting i've been playing a song that i wrote um called your love to love me for years that i wrote and i just started playing it the other day i, I it's like a rock song and I started playing it the other day, finger picking. And I'm like, oh shit. My husband's like, oh, now you're playing it the way it should be played. And I was like, oh no. But years, years, years playing it one way. And it, I love it one way, but then you finger pick it. It's like, oh, it's a totally different song. And theme wise, I'm just curious, how, do, do you, I know you once said you don't go theme hunting. And I was, I always remembered that, you know, in your plays, but in your songs, do they have themes? Do you want themes or do you just want to feel pretty much they, they they i mean they they have stories or things that they want to say sure 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 yeah i don't know if they, i don't think i mean they have you know i wrote a song photograph of a brother it's about a photograph of a man on the cover of the on the front page of the newspaper you know you know yeah yeah i don't go hunting for that though i just let it come show up let it come play your instrument find a groove allow yourself to say gobbledygook until the words come rewrite a lot yeah Thank cool you. thanks Bob. um all right we got about eight minutes left and we're gonna go to vernita
Anita. Hey, sis. How you doing? Where are you? Uh oh. Hey. Can you see me? Hi, SLT. Hi. How you doing? You're inside today. I am. It's yeah. a little, it started raining. So oh. what else I know? Um, but grateful to be here. Um, hi, Audrey. Hi, everyone. So a um, couple of things have come up. Mm -hmm. I am, one, I'm almost done with my, my tree piece that I was talking about yesterday. And yeah. I think that brings up for me, you know, something I talked about before the break is this experience of sometimes it's like it's hot, it's hot and it just comes out. And then there's other pieces that it's like this, the process can be like molasses. Right. And what I'm noticing and something that you just touched on about kind of this, I, I do recognize I usually start my articles with this stream of consciousness, the gobbly goop of this, but sometimes it's almost like I do it to the point of, it's like I've gone out too far and lost my way and I have a hard time reining it back in so that it can become this coherent final piece. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if you have any thoughts about, you know, maintaining some, I feel like the word is sense of control with the um, stream of consciousness and not going so far that like now I'm just lost in my own sauce. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you um, usually when you're writing all this sort of free writing, free form stuff, do you have a title in mind? Um, sometimes I do. Um, sometimes I don't. Um, I think I go into it having at least a, a premise of what it is that I want to write about or what impact that I'm hoping to make with the piece. Mm -hmm. And what, um, what uh, your writing sessions, are they uh, an hour long, 20 minutes long? How do you go about? Oh, they vary by day. I am, oh, I, I was gonna uh, share that I'm excited that I, I have done at minimum 20 minutes a day, every day since, the beginning of July, including my birthday. Oh, congratulations. And yeah. Happy. Yeah, great. Thank you. Uh, but then on some days it goes longer. So I, I've committed to the minimum of 20 minutes, but you know, one day might be two hours, one day is 45 minutes, maybe one day is six hours, just depending mm -hmm. on what happens. And I usually use kind of a timer to break it up in increments. Uh -huh. That's great. That's great. I mean, may, this, there's some things you can do. You can like you know, make yourself a little sign on an index card or bigger that says like the title of your piece. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like if you were, um, you, you're living in New York, you live in New York. I do, Brooklyn. Yeah. So if you said, I'm, I'm going to drive to California and you got in the car and you just started driving, right? After you, you'd want to check the, the GPS, right? Remember, Vernita, we're going to California. Oh, right, 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 right. So that can help you sort of stay on a road. You should still be open to whatever comes. But if you're concerned about maintaining control, you might want to just remind yourself of the title or theme or message or point of your article, you know? What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that, what am I, why am I writing this? The reason why you're writing it, you might put those things on some note cards around you during your writing period and just glance at them every once in a while when your mind is wandering, you know, you might want to do that. Yes. Oh, uh, I love that. Cause yeah, that's what I feel like. Sometimes I lose control or lose a handle on what is my point. And it's right. just, there's, uh -huh. just a lot, there's just a lot of things on the page. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, and you can even say, if you get law, you can even say, oh, your point, you know, to, to remind kids to, you know, whatever, like Black Lives Matter begins at home or something. So you have that and you go and you can just say, remember, Vernita, I'm, I'm trying to remind kids that Black Lives Matter begins at home, you know, like that. So you can just write, you can copy the, the point of your article right in the manuscript as you're writing, just to try to bring your mind back. Okay, I like that. Mm -hmm. uh um, that's helpful thing. And then my second question is, um, so I, I, I have an update. Um, I talked about the, the magazine that I consulted for, for events. They have a, right. a disparity between what they, they promote, um, support of racial equity, but they don't practice it in the actual day to day, no diversity on their team, et cetera. 
And so um, I, um, with the help of getting help from other people, you know, first I drafted a letter and then turned into a strategic email to the editor in chief and um, who responded to me in less than an hour. Hmm. As I talked about um, the article, the point of the article, speaking to the challenges of reconciliation of like what makes this so hard for these historically um, white organizations who say they want to do better to actually do better. Mm -hmm. And um, she, you know, they've agreed to participate in me interviewing them. Mm -hmm. And so my two things come up. One, and I appreciate you mentioning, you know, that you had not to school for writing. I think I'm feeling a little bit hot this time. So I am approaching, um, I'm pushing myself out of my comfort zone that it's like I've done several interviews before, but they've always been like nice interviews. Mm -hmm. um, this, I'm stepping into a space of um, the interview subject has agreed to participate, but the subject is one that could easily uh, result in the person becoming defensive or just kind of placating thinking what they, you know, you want to hear. And um, I am pushing myself to be taken seriously as a writer. That not something I do as a, a gig on the side. Um, so just any thoughts around, one, maintaining that confidence as, you know, particularly as someone who like didn't go to school to be uh, right. I always did well in writing, got all A's in my writing classes at Cornell, but, you know, my, my major was not this. Um, and they, you know, the last time I worked with this group of people, I was, you know, working on producing an event. So there's, um, they're, they're aware of my writing. They've seen some of my previous articles, but now I'm going into the lion's den. Mm -hmm. What's your goal, Renita? Um, twofold. My, well, at the end of the day, my goal is that I want to see sustained, genuine change so that the black and brown um, perspective consultants, mm -hmm. employees that come behind me will have a different or a different experience with this mm -hmm. organization than, than mm -hmm. I have. Mm -hmm. That um, persons like myself have the opportunity to step into roles that have historically been excluded mm -hmm. um, from, and that the, um, in this case, the, the company um, being truly self-examining in closing the gaps between their outward appearance and promoted message and their actual practice. Right. I hear you. Um, I, I mean, I, I, you know, it's, it, it's, 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 it's a tricky thing to answer uh, in a way. I mean, you know, we're trying to, if, if you're trying to encourage people to change in ways that they don't want to change or that they might not want to change, uh, ask the questions that you need to ask as a person, as a POC, as a black woman, sister person, right? ask the questions that you need to ask, let them answer in ways that they need to and leave it at that. I mean, you know, I, I, it's like, it's like dating Vernita. If you've ever dated somebody go, I wish they were different. They should know that they should, you know, do their laundry every week, whatever the, the thing is that you want someone to do that you're dating and you're trying to get them to change. Uh, there's only so much changing of others that we can accomplish in a limited interactive space. You know what I'm saying? So it, this, this is like a bit a long-term project that you're gonna be under, in, engaging in. And this yeah. is the first step. So maybe the first step is just to simply ask your questions and let them answer in the way they want. And let that be, sorry, that's my kid. He's like, it's six o'clock, mom, get off the Zoom. Um, but you know what I mean? Do you, do you understand? Ask the questions that you need to uh, because they're probably sitting there going, oh, gee, she's going to ask really hard questions and I'm not going to be able, you know, they have their own thing. Ask the questions you need to ask. Let them answer in the way that they need to answer. And that's step one. And then you're going to recalculate after that experience. Okay. Okay, my phone is, I'm supposed to be in another call. 
Oh my gosh, SLP, thank you for being with us always. It's ringing, it's ringing. Yeah. Ah, okay. We love thank you guys. Thank you, thank you, you're the best. Okay, see you tomorrow. Bye, SLP. Bye. Sorry about that. Hey, okay. You so all know the 3 p.m. spiel. Sign up by 3 p.m. Eastern every single day. And I'll send you a link between 3 p.m. and 4.30 p.m. Eastern. See you tomorrow at five. <laughs> Bye.